Hey everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. We're gonna be installing an AC unit for an electric car. You might be wondering how you make an AC system work with a Tesla swapped car. So basically you need an AC compressor and not just any AC compressor, but one that is electric. Most conventional vehicles will have their air conditioning supported by a belt driven pulley from the engine. Let's say you wanna free up some of your engine horsepower or in our case, we're doing electric car. How do you do AC without using the internal combustion engine? Well, today I'm gonna to walk you through what we did with this car. Let's get to it. Apex charger. They are the preferred EV charger of the electric supercar channel. Previously, we've discussed some of the primary features such as the cord length, the super high amps that you're able to use, as well as covered installation and the app. So today we're gonna to go over some of the cool features like setting your charging time. So you can optimize your savings to charge during non-peak times. So on the console here, you can just hit the delay button. So if I plug it in, it would charge right away. If I delay one hour, so that's an easy way to do it just here on the console. However, the app has a few more options. So you can go into charging mode. So we can do things like quantitative charge. This is the total amount of energy that'll give your car. So you could say 10 kilowatts is all I need. So I think one of the better features here is the fixed time charging. So this allows you to set the charge times to optimize your rate for non-peak hours. It says we're in our fixed time charges. So it's begun its charge and it will cut off its charge if we exceed our time that we've set in the app. Right here, you can see uh, it's gone from 10 to 11 up here. We're at 1042, so in about 18 minutes, it should shut off by itself. As you can see up here, we are at 1102, the charging stopped by itself. So again, that's the advantage of having a, an app and a charger that can really help you take advantage of any cost savings. So I think that's pretty cool. They've kind of really thought through a lot of these things. They, th they thought, okay, what if you're like an apartment complex, you don't want just anybody to use it. You got the RFID, you also got your app, and then you also can switch it into plug and play mode, which I think a lot of people would do if you're just kind of in your own garage. If you were in need of a charger, this is a great option. It's got the best power that I've seen. It's got the longest cable that I've seen. Um, it's got all the options for charging with RFID, app, or just plug and play. So please go visit their site and pick up a charger today. So I'm not an expert, but I'll kind of try and briefly explain how an AC system works and which parts we're gonna be replacing. This whole system operates on a very special substance called refrigerant. The refrigerant, because of its properties, when it goes to a gas state or a liquid state, there's a lot of heat that it can be exchanged, and that's kind of the properties that the system takes advantage of to cool the car. So I'm gonna briefly go through some of those. Hopefully you can follow along. The compressor is really the workhorse of the system and it takes a low temperature, low pressure gas and compresses it to a high temperature, high pressure gas. That then moves to the condenser, which is kind of like the radiator at the front of the car. So as this high temperature, high pressure gas goes through the condenser, the cool air through the condenser allows that to then become a high pressure liquid. That high pressure liquid then goes through the expansion valve. The expansion valve allows the high pressure liquid to then go to a low pressure liquid, which then goes through the evaporator. So the evaporator is what's inside the car and when the fan blows it, you get lots of cool air in the car. That process though, turns it back into a low pressure gas, at which point it then goes back into the compressor to be cycled again. All right, it is time to get this AC installed. All right, so this is the AC compressor I got. It basically just needs high voltage that goes right here. So it needs a PWM control as well. It's a pulse width modulation and then basically these go back to your original fittings. So there's the suction side, the discharge side. So basically what I need to do is take the AC hoses off the car, get them so they can adapt to these fittings and then figure out a place to mount this, get a PWM controller, and then it'll be complete. I've got some information here. The challenge I have is basically got a suction and discharge port and these lines don't necessarily match what is in the car. So I believe this is the suction line, this discharge line. This one up here, this one matches what we need, but this one is too small. So I've got a local shop that will make me some custom AC lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt these and get them over there so they can make some new ones. So I've got the two lines out. I probably only needed one, but I thought I'd better check with the experts. So I'm gonna go in and get, I think just this new fitting or a whole new line made. I took the AC hoses off the Nissan and got uh, some new things put on. So essentially the new ends put on so we can connect it to our new AC compressor. Right through there. That should be 
good. All right, so trying to mount the AC compressor, the natural place uh, that the hoses wanna come out is right there. I had a local company make some longer AC hoses that are flexible, so my thought was to put things up here. The way things are coming out and stuff, it just doesn't uh, provide enough room. And so I need to bend one of these tubes. So I got a tubing bender, and we're gonna take one of these off and bend it so we've got a little more room. All right, so it's basically this hose here, bends down, bends up, bends over, and then it kind of goes in the engine bay itself, and we have to like wrap it back around. So we got a tubing bender, we're gonna get some of this insulation off, bend it in a more favorable direction for us. You just have to be a man. Oh my gosh. Do I need to go down or up? how bad this is. I was trying to evaluate space where we could put the AC compressor. The thing is, I would like to keep as much of this open for batteries and other things. So I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm actually gonna put it up front here. So this is kind of where the air intake was and essentially we're not gonna use anything up here. So I'm gonna try and put it up here. I think there's some mounting holes and things we can use. So I'm gonna go with my new workflow and I'm gonna do some 3D scans followed by a 3D print. So just that quick, got a good scan. So again, that gives them really good definition. So we'll kind of find out exactly where those holes are and do a 3D model that we can then 3D print. We'll go ahead and make a 3D model, a CAD model, and then we'll print it and see how it fits in the car. All right, here is the 3D printed model. So we'll go ahead and break off the supports and see how it fits in the car. All right, I might just run a drill bit through some of these holes, make sure they're nice and clean and circular. As you can see, this has been modeled to do something out of sheet metal. So uh, we can use our friends over at Send Cut Send. All right, all the holes line up. Everything looks promising so far. It's almost like we designed it that way. All right, so here's where it ends up. The compressor, everything fits. However, the fittings are such that you couldn't put a hose on. So I'm gonna have to make a few changes. So that's the other one. And again, I think you could fit that one on. All right, the space right here didn't really work for the AC. So we actually have another space. It's kind of underneath the headlight here. So there's a lot of space over there. Um, the hoses seem like uh, the entrance points for some of those connections are gonna do better. So we're gonna model it up and do it over here. Gotta love it when we get our send, cut, send packages. Today we are graduating. I give you the former welding table. This has been well used and we're getting something better. we officially have a welding table. This was actually gifted or donated by a viewer. So this is amazing. It is a step up over my previous fireball tool table. But yeah, this will hopefully allow us to uh, do some better welds. All right, this is just a quick test fit. Again, this is the electric compressor and just uh, got my bracket tacked in place and then bolted in place, just making sure everything looks good and fits. We'll go ahead and do a full weld. Also just confirming with the bumper on that everything still fits back there. Everything fits with lots of room. I have a habit of doing full welds just like front to back, top to bottom. Um, and lots of times it's just not needed. So I'm gonna practice some stitch welds, save a little material. There we are, all painted up. Some good corrosion protection. All right, I know this has nothing to do with AC, but with this send cut send order, we also got the material for the pedal stop 
for the accelerator pedal. So while we're doing some welding, I'm gonna weld that up and show you how that turned out as well. All right, so there is the pedal stop. So I've just tacked it in place just to make sure, but uh, as you can see, like the pedal comes and it just is, this is adjustable and I can kind of tighten it or loosen it, but basically just right there. So the pedal's fully stopped, but it's got just like the tiniest bit of space. So if they keep pushing, it'll be absorbed there. So we just wanted to check before we did full welds, it looks like everything's gonna be great. So we'll go ahead and do full welds. All right, got it all welded up. So we're gonna clean this and then give it a coat of paint. All right, so here it is. I think it looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and put it in the car. All right, I'll just kind of demonstrate here what we got going on. So this just a sheet of paper behind the pedal and the rubber stop. So you can kind of hear it hit its stop, right? So when it hits the stop, the paper can move. All right, so it moves back and forth. If I keep pushing though, paper's stuck. So that's exactly where we want it. So meaning it's it's got the rubber stop's not gonna affect its full travel, but if you keep pushing, the rubber stop will take the force. All right, for mounting this, I've got some rubber isolators to try and keep a lot of the vibrations off this. So I've got some all thread, I'll put the rubber isolators on, kind of pinch everything together, and then we'll mount it. Okay, we've got the AC installed, including the AC lines. I've just got to work on the connectors now. So again, that's very, very rigid, rust protected. Got some rubber isolators, so I think we should be good. We're gonna wire up the connectors for the AC unit. So we've got this one, which is for the high voltage. We've got this one that's more kind of the communication, uh, tell it to turn on and how much and things like that. It also requires this. This is a PWM controller. We'll get those wired up. have any more 20 gauge, so I've bought some big rolls. All right, there is the electric AC unit. You can see the plugs, We've got the plugs plugged in, We've got the wires run. It's got some nice cable clamps. And then around the bend, anywhere where I thought the wires might rub, I put a little extra insulation. We've got it running so up through there, and then they're coming out up here. So I feel like we're gonna have a, a lot more wires. So I'm probably just gonna leave them here without the high voltage pack. We really can't turn anything on. So the other wire bundle is here and that needs to go to a fuse relay box that we haven't got yet. So I think this is where we'll leave wiring for now. All right, as you saw, it's not too challenging 
but we can't get everything all done yet because we're still missing our battery pack. So that's about all we can do for this time. Stay tuned when we get our batteries and everything in place, we'll fire it up, let you see the final result. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time. Today we're talking about the AC system in this Tesla swap. Come on, Ben, do you want it to go down or up? <laughs>